China has become the world's factory, a factory which needs a megaload of electricity. The Chinese use coal to produce most of their energy, and there are hundreds of new coal-fired power stations in production. The resulting pollution is dire, and the government knows it. Sustainable development is the government's new catch cry, and it's pouring resources into renewable energy. We've been able to achieve in about 18 months uh, six uh, wind farms, uh, about 300 megawatts of power, that's about 250 wind turbines, uh, and that's producing enough electricity to probably do something like um, 300,000 to 500,000 homes in China. Mark Kelleher is the managing director of Tasmanian company Roaring Forties. Two years ago, Australian government support for wind farms diminished, the company put projects on hold and took its business to China, where wind power is booming. Wind energy is the major deployable renewable energy uh, source at the moment, worldwide. It's growing about 28% a year, uh, wind energy, and China is going to be the biggest uh, wind market within perhaps you know, five to eight years. Shuangliao in northeastern Jilin province is a good example of the rural China which has missed out on the prosperity of the major cities. Roaring Forties operates a wind farm here in partnership with Datang Corporation, one of the country's biggest power companies. Like China's other traditional power suppliers, it's now investing in renewable energy. And how's the wind around here? Well, China has pretty good resource worldwide. There are four very good regions within China, and this is one of those areas. Although wind power costs almost twice as much to produce as coal-fired power, in China the Australians have found generous incentives to make it a profitable investment. There are tax breaks from the Chinese government, and because China is a signatory to the Kyoto Protocol, there's international funding as well. So how big can the wind business get for your company here in China? Well, it's just fantastic opportunities here. The wind alone, it's setting a target of the equivalent of Australia's total uh, generation system just from wind. But how long will it take to get to that stage? That's for a target for 2020, but they're already running ahead of their plans for that, so we are very confident, in fact, that will be an even bigger target than that. Here, 21st century technology sits side by side with 19th century rural production. There's little motorisation and running water is still a way off. Not everyone agrees the wind farm's been a positive development. This wind farm took a year to build and started generating electricity in October last year. The 58 turbines at Shuangliao produce 103 gigawatt hours of electricity every year, enough to power 96,000 households. Is this pattern uh, happen every day? I think anything China says it's going to do, it puts the resource effort in, it's able to, it marshals the resources, it puts the transmission infrastructure in. It's going to be probably 
the world's number one renewable energy uh, country, I would think, over the next 10 or 15 years. Seven hundred kilometres away in Shandong province is the coastal city of Weihai. It's a clean, modern and funky city. With a strong and growing economy, local politicians like Lu Xiaowei say they're keen to protect the environment. With the go-ahead from the local government, Roaring Forties is building a wind farm on the coast in partnership with another major Chinese power supplier. Wang Guangchun is chairman of the Guohua Resourceful Wind Power Generation Company. Wind power may be new for China's leading power companies, but Shandong's seafaring locals have been onto it for years. Long Lianzhu grew up in the area and says wind powered electricity took off here in the 1980s. Uh, Weihai has an environment worth protecting, so selling the concept of wind power is not a difficult task. China has mandated that within 13 years, 16% of all energy must come from renewable sources. A large portion of this will be from wind. Government regulations require that the greater part of wind technology be manufactured in China. For the Tasmanian company, it's been a fast ride to become a leading player in the Chinese wind power market in just a couple of years. Okay, well, just a toast to uh, thank everybody here for all their efforts. Uh, Mark Kelleher has had to learn quickly how to do business in China, and especially the delicate art of banqueting. A very important part of you know, sharing, sharing the dinner together, um, there's a lot of you know, toasting uh, each, each other. Uh, they, you know, that gets pretty hairy sometimes. There's a very strong Chinese spirit here that can sort of knock your, knock your head off. <laughs> Chinese executives genuinely believe that if you get drunk with somebody, you'll see their true side. Even if you don't like drinking very much, there's really no avoiding it if you want to do business here. And in Mark Kelleher's case, his business relationships are paying off. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here today in Chenchung uh, to sign uh, with, together with our great partner, Dartan Jiling, uh, one of what's going to be the world's largest wind farms. He's just signed a deal to build a wind farm which will produce 1,000 megawatts of electricity. 
At full capacity, it could power two million homes. This has the potential to be the world's largest wind farm. You know, maybe, I guess, as the industry is growing a lot, by the time we fully develop that, it may not be, but it's certainly a very significant um, uh, wind farm uh, in, a, in a world sense. China has enormous problems with air pollution, more than any other country. But this is the world's problem, and maybe this company is making a killing in the place where it's most needed.